Um, so we've got Helen Pritchard, the amazing Helen, who it just makes me so sad that last time I saw you, we were we downed a lot of bottles of wine and we were out and hugging loads of people and, you know, the good yes. old day. And the here we are on Zoom. Exactly. Um, but absolute LinkedIn guru, winner of loads of awards. Um, what's the one this year? The highest growth, growth, high growth business of the year fsb award so what helen doesn't know about linkedin um mm. and growing your linkedin and sales on linkedin nobody in the whole world knows um she coaches globally um and has amazing courses a 12-week mastermind linkedin course so we will put all that detail um on when we send out the um notes at the end plus this webinar is being recorded so um if you don't worry about writing everything down and because it will be, you can go back and see it and the, it will have the sheets and the tip sheets um, that go out afterwards. There's Q and A and um, the chat box. So they're all open. Um, so any questions just fire away. And then at the end, um, we will grill her. <laughs> but I will, um, I'll hand over to you, Helen. Go for it. Oh, thanks, girls. Hello. I, I so it just feels like another lifetime since I last saw you, doesn't it? It's incredible. Um, okay, hi everybody. Some of you will probably have no idea who I am. So just to give you a super quick intro, um, obviously I'm Helen Pritchard. I am most famous for helping business owners get leads from LinkedIn, which is possibly the least sexy thing I probably could have done when I grew up. I thought I'd do something much more interesting and sexy sounding than that. However, um, for me, just really quickly to give you a bit of background, uh, it completely saved, LinkedIn completely saved my life um, about 10 years ago from now, uh, from where we are now. I was kind of just 30. I was just starting out in business. Um, I wanted to do social media marketing. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And But my circumstances were, I was about 90 grand in personal debt. Me and my husband had just split up. We'd just gone through the recession. He'd been a builder. Um, and I had really severe mental health problems. I had two kids under five. So I was kind of like, all right, yeah. So I want to start this business. I want to grow this business. But I've got absolutely no money. I've got, logistically, I can't seem to get anywhere because I've got these little kids. And um, God love them. They're not little anymore. Teenagers upstairs right now as I speak. Um, and my mental health was in this position where I just didn't feel confident standing up, talking um, talking to people, you know, selling my stuff. And I, I kind of was like, how am I going to get myself out of this mess? And LinkedIn for me really, really saved me. And I'll talk through how I use LinkedIn. Um, and the things, the things that I'm going to teach you today are the stuff that I did then um, and I continue to do today like now, like even so now. I've taught hundreds and thousands of people this stuff. The way of using it was the way that I was, I had no idea how to use LinkedIn. So when I did it, I didn't get any training. I'm, I'm not a LinkedIn trainer. I've never been trained on how to use LinkedIn. I've never like, I've never been on a course about how to use LinkedIn. All I've done is use LinkedIn in a way that made sense to me. Um, and I use it in a way that's so simple that like literally anybody can do it. It's all straightforward. It's template, templated out really. You just need to do the work. Um, and then after that, the, the, the pre-work that I'll talk about today, and then after that, it's only like three things to do a day. Um, what I won't be talking about are some of the things that you probably thought I would be talking about, if that makes sense. So a lot of people look at LinkedIn um, and they think, oh, it's, you know, it's just for corporate or it's just for B2B or it's really boring and stayed or, you know, you can't be yourself on there. You've got to be a certain way. You've got to send loads of messages, you've got to spam people, or you've got to, you know, you, you can't just turn up on LinkedIn and be yourself. So people tend to be quite nervous of it, or they think it's not for me because I'm a local business, or I sell direct to the end user, or, you know, there's a million different reasons why people think LinkedIn's not for them. And I'm here to tell you, it definitely is for you. And um, for me, it completely transformed my life. It meant that people were, my, I knew who my ideal client was, and people were coming to me and wanting to buy what I had to offer, knowing exactly what was in it for them, how much it was going to cost, you know, what, how it was going to be delivered to them. And people were coming to me wanting to buy. So it's not about how to sell on LinkedIn. It's not about how to network on LinkedIn. This session is going to be about how to present yourself and use LinkedIn in a way that your ideal clients are coming to you and asking to buy from you. And isn't that nice? <laughs> isn't that a lot nicer um, than the usual stuff that we see? Now, I'm not going to talk about um, LinkedIn 
groups because um, they're absolutely rubbish. LinkedIn business pages are a complete waste of time, so you don't need to worry about those. Uh, we don't need to talk about how to send direct message on LinkedIn because we're not going to do any of that. We're never going to send anyone a direct message on LinkedIn. Um, and we're only ever going to reply to a direct message on LinkedIn when someone messages us wanting to buy our thing. Um, we are not going to worry about like what time to post or what the algorithm does or how can we do like automation or any of that stuff. Honestly, it's all gross. Don't bother. Don't do it. We just going to focus on how can we use LinkedIn in a way that makes it easy for us to make loads of money without having to do anything spammy and horrible that makes us feel weird. So that's kind of the prequel to what we're going to talk about. Um, I have got a mastermind um, that's been running for nearly three years now. We've done, you know, last year we did over a million pounds in sales um, of it. And I'm going to teach you now for free everything that's pretty much in there. Like, I'm not going to leave anything out. It's not like I'm just going to give you a little taster because I want you to come and buy my stuff. Like, if, if at the end of it you want to talk to me or like look at the links and stuff, that's absolutely fine. But this is going to be a standalone training session. So you can leave here today, go and use LinkedIn, get some cash in the bank, and then, you know, go and live happily ever after. This is not about me trying to promote my business. Like, I love Emma's bits. I'd do anything for it. And I'm here to, you know, give you actually tangible stuff that you can use today. So in the comments, if you could let me know who you are, what you do, what your business is, how you feel about LinkedIn, um, and any questions you've got, uh, and we'll, I'll try and answer some as I go. It's not my first rodeo doing a live training session, so I should be able to manage. Um, if not, we'll come to them at the end. Okay, everyone have a drink and take a breath, including me. Hmm. <sighs> How's everyone doing? That's what I want to know. How's everyone feeling? We're not talking about the C word today. Although it is a super good time to get your LinkedIn shit together because, you know, 2021, the whole world's going to wake up and uh, everyone's going to be like, oh, we need to buy the things. We need to do the things. We need to find the solutions to the problems that we've got. So it's really important that you do get your stuff together now. Okay, so most important thing for LinkedIn is that you know who your ideal client is. So I'm gonna to have to skip over a little bit of the pre-work as in, you know, ideal client avatar work that I do is like you draw, draw out your ideal person, just pick one person who's gonna be the perfect person to buy your products or service. We literally draw them out, like we draw a stick man, give them a name, give them a life, give them a partner, give them a house to live in, you know, give them some problems that you know that you can solve and really build up a picture of one ideal client not the only person you're ever going to work with but one bullseye client when you know your ideal client all this stuff becomes a lot easier the other thing i need you to do and you might this might make you feel super uncomfortable which is perfectly normal but i just want you to trust the process um is i want you to decide to just sell one thing to one person at one price for now on linkedin not forever just for now just want to choose all the things you could do, should do, want to do, have done, get asked to do, people, you know, people pay you to do, all those things. We're not going to do all those things. We're just going to focus on selling one thing to one person at one time on LinkedIn. And that might make you feel super uncomfortable, but trust me, it's going to make things super easy for you when it comes to getting leads from LinkedIn. So you need to make some decisions. What do I actually want to sell on LinkedIn? What's the one thing I really want to focus on? And we're going to choose that and we're going to go for that thing for now and not forever. Now, the way that I use LinkedIn, the way that I teach LinkedIn will be completely different to what you've heard before. I guarantee it. Like, I absolutely guarantee it because the way I use it is the opposite to how everyone else has used it. So you are going to have to put that to one side, like what you've been doing so far, what you've read about, what you've thought about, what the stuff that you read on that, and just focus on just trusting me and follow the process. Like there's a reason why people you'll give me lots of money because you know this stuff it does work. It does work, it will work and it's guaranteed to work if you do the work. So for LinkedIn, we are going to make our LinkedIn profiles a love letter to our ideal client instead of a showcase of how great we are. <laughs> so that can be a first, the first big difference in my stuff is definitely that. So I want you to, when you think about the one thing you're gonna to sell to your ideal client, I want you to use my model, which is the value, joy, profit triangle, the VJP triangle, which sounds more sexy than it actually is. So the value, joy, profit is all the things that you could do, should do, wanna do, might do, have been paid to do in the past and get told you should do, that should charge for. 
write them all down and then just run them all through and pick which one do I, where do I add the most value? Where do I get the most joy out of the work that I do and the people that I work with? It's really important. Like we don't work with dickheads. That's the rule from now on. Like we only work with people who love us and we love. Um, and where can I make the most profit both now, but also in the future in regards to being like scalable and that kind of stuff. So value, joy, profit should be at the center of your decision making around what's the one thing you're going to sell to one person at one price. Um, if you've got multiple packages or you do something bespoke, I want you to just choose one of your packages and focus on that. Um, and I want you, if you do something bespoke or, or you do something that has to be, you know, it's always different, just have a starting from price. Yeah, nobody goes to Rolex, not knowing how much the watches are. Like, you just need to, you want people to know, you know, where are you in the market so that you're never wasting time with people who are like interested in what you do, but turns out they can't afford you. Um, and on that, like, it's, I think it's probably, again, one of the most important bits of my teaching is that clarity and transparency in the, in the having your prices out there up front and center, definitely. The other thing I want to do just before we start into like the nitty gritty of what, how do we show up on LinkedIn is I want you to write down your need to earn number per month and your want to earn number per month. So what I mean by that is how much do you need to earn? So you look after yourself and any dependents, not including any partner's income. Um, and write that down. And then what's your next target for your business? So what's your next want to earn figure? So for example, when I started out, I was like, I need to earn two and a half grand a month to look after me and the kids and pay these debts back. Um, I want to earn five grand a month so I can have a housekeeper and, you know, someone clean my car for me and, you know, get all my, you know, buy all the nice things that I want um, next. I never set out thinking I want to do like million pounds in sales. I was always like, just what, what do I need to earn now? And what do I need to earn next? And I think that's a really powerful thing because when you write those two numbers down, I want you to divide them by the amount of things that you need to sell to hit those targets. And that's important because most businesses, and I don't know what you all do yet. I've had to look, I'm having a quick look. Um, most businesses, particularly, um, sort of lifestyle businesses, you know, up to kind of six figure, uh, the sort of six figure mark, most businesses only need 10 clients around that. Um, so for, in my example, I needed to get 10 clients to pay me 250 pounds a month to hit my target. And that was all I focused on, on LinkedIn. And that was my complete focus until I hit that target. And then I started to do other things and lay other things on top of that. So again, you might think, what's this got to do with LinkedIn? But trust me, having this clarity and focus on what you're going to go to LinkedIn to sell and how many of those things you need to sell will help you when we get to things like, you know, how, how many people do I need to actually be inquiring for my stuff? Because actually, the more niche you are here, the more narrow your decision making is, the easier it gets, the more, e the easier it is to find clients and the more you can charge because you become a specialist in your niche. Right, so that's quite a lot of big concepts for you to absorb at 11 o'clock on a Thursday in the middle of a pandemic. But anyway, hopefully that makes sense. And it's quite good you have to do it quick because sometimes when I teach this, like in the challenge, I'm in the middle of a challenge at the moment, I've got 2,000 people in there, they're all going through this process for me over five days. Sometimes the fact that we're moving on really quickly means that people have to make a decision and think, well, it's not forever, it's just for now, let's just follow the process and trust what Helen says and let's go through it. So. Now, I want you to have one thing to sell to one person at one price and know how many of those things that you need to sell. Easy. <laughs> then the rest of it will make sense. So I'm going to use my example. So me, drunk and desperate, 10 years ago, completely skinned, like uh, mental health, or up the wall, two kids under five, thinking, what am I going to do? So I looked at LinkedIn and I thought, what do I need this to do for me? Like, how am I going to get? I know I need to get 10 clients, pay me £250 a month you know, something ridiculous back then. I think that was for posting on Facebook. I was for posting on Facebook and Twitter. I can't remember the exact amounts, but anyway. Um, who's my ideal client? So I'd drawn him out and I'd had fun with it. And he was, you know, he was called Dave and he was 55 and he was the kind of guy that'd go to the pub with my dad and he drinks real ale and he's got his own business and he lives in Warrington, which is my small town up north. Um, and he, you know, didn't want to do social media. He heard, he's heard about it, doesn't want to do it, but no, he needs to for his business wants someone to just do it for him, you know, so he can just go and play golf and forget about it. And he's quite happy to give me the 250 quid a month, not get involved and just let me get on with it. That was how I, I, I envisaged like as a creative thing is like my ideal client. So I was like, I just need to find 10 Daves. 
that's it. And I think when you start to think like that, the overwhelm, I don't know where you're all at in your business, like sort of journey, like some, certainly at the beginning, I think the overwhelm is real. You know, you're like all of the different ways I could be showing up and I could be promoting my business and I could be spending my money. <laughs> Basically, I was kind of, you know, for me, I was like, right. So all I need to do is create my profile and make it so that when I get Dave to look at it, he's going to be really clear on what it is I'm going to do for him, how much it's going to be and who I am and why I'm the person to do it for him. That was like my, my thought process. Um, and I'd, I'd done a bit in digital marketing and I'd done a bit of websites and stuff and I just thought of it like a landing page. So I was like, how can I make my personal profile, this is all about personal profile by the way, not business pages, business pages are absolute dog shit, they're impossible to get loads of followers on unless you're a brand and you've got a lot of loyal, loyal followers and again, you know, how many business pages do you follow on LinkedIn? Precisely, it's probably none because why would you? Anyway, so this is all about personal profile. How can I pe get people to come and land on my profile page and when they get here, be like, yes, that's, this is the person for me. That's going to solve the problem I've got and I want it. And that's the kind of the thought process I want all of your ideal clients to go through. LinkedIn for me is around about getting complete strangers who've never heard of you and don't know who you are interested enough to click on your headline, which is, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, bit that goes underneath your name on LinkedIn, to just enough, just enough of intrigue and interest to click on that, to come to your profile and then answer a couple of questions, which is the first couple of lines, which again, I'll talk about in a second, and be interested enough to press click more. So all of these little micro emotional like commitments to you. And then interested enough to read your whole profile and be answering yes to all the questions or most of the questions, and then be convinced by what they see on your profile, both in the copy, i.e. the writing on there, and the videos that you can put on there, and the recommendations that you have on there, to be convinced enough to send you a message on LinkedIn and ask for more information. That's the buyer journey, if you want to, call, if you want to make it sound strategic. But that, you know, in my head, I was like, I just want Dave to come and click on my stuff and, and send me a message. That's, that's the, the outcome that we want to achieve. So to do that, um, the most important part of your LinkedIn profile is your headline. In my opinion, by the way, other opinions are available. I mean, like, you know, a lot of LinkedIn trainers will tell you the opposite. For me, the most important part is the headline. And the reason for that, the headline is the bit that goes underneath your name on LinkedIn. So if anyone wants to go and have a peep at me, um, my profile, if you search for LinkedIn forward slash in forward slash Helen Pritchard, I think, I don't think I've got any numbers. Um, you can go and have a look at this, maybe on your phone while you're watching this on the computer, so you can see how I, I talk through this process. But anyway, your headline is the bit that goes underneath your name and you get quite a lot of characters. And the important thing about it which puts LinkedIn above any of the other social media platforms, in my opinion, is that it follows you around everywhere. Everywhere you go on LinkedIn, everything you do, every time you post, every time you ask somebody to connect, every time you comment on somebody else's post, your headline is there for people to read without having to go anywhere else. And the, why that's so powerful is because the headlines as I teach it are like your pure elevator pitch, like everything is in there. And only people who are interested in that will click because otherwise, why would they? So write in a headline that speaks directly to your ideal client and tells them exactly what outcomes you want to deliver for them, how are you going to deliver them and how much you're going to charge them is like this kind of micro sales page, if you like, um, that follows you around everywhere, everything you do, all the activity that you do on LinkedIn and those three things that I'm going to show you or talk about what to do each day are all about how can I get my headline in front of my ideal client over and over and over and over again. So then when they are in the right time and space and energy that they want to, they've got a problem that I can solve, they click on my headline and they come to my profile. And the good thing about LinkedIn is it lets you see all this happening. Like it lets you see how many people are looking at you. So it's like, see how many people, who's looking at you, see who's, you know, how many people are uh, landing on your profile, see how many people are, are finding you in search engines. So what's really good and bad about LinkedIn is the data because you're allowed to, see, you can see the results of your work, but also you can, you, I know a lot of people tend to get hung up on it. And I always say like the money's not in the metrics, the money's in the inbox because most people need these 10 clients. So if you need 10 or a hundred clients, you know, 
the, the money's in, the, the inquiry's in the inbox. But anyway, you can see the real tangible outcomes of your work because you'll see that those, you know, those numbers going up, the more active you are. And also, it's about the right people looking at your profile. We want to repel as many people as possible. We just want to attract people who are interested in buying our stuff. And everyone else, we just want them to, we want them to not even barely notice us. So headline template, I'm going to write this in the comments. Now, it's a, <coughs> it's a template for a reason and it's a template because it works. And I, again, I get a lot of stick for it because thousands and thousands of people have got it on LinkedIn. Um, but we just laugh at that because the helping headline um, is only attractive and of interest to your ideal client. So we don't care what other people think about it. And we certainly don't care what other markets think about it because they're just like bitching because they've not trained tens of thousands of people and I have. Um, okay, so I don't, and I'm not really good at spelling. So hold on. I, oh, achieve X, Y, Z, I, X, Y, Z. And then, fence posts. Okay, so. Oh no, I've sent it to the panellists, that's not the right thing to do, is it? Hold on. See, me and tech, not really my friends, so if you're expecting some techie stuff, send it to the panellists and attendees, there we go. Oh no, done it wrong again. <laughs> I was like, get her off, get her off. Right, so it is, it's helping XYZ, so that's where you feel your bit in, so helping your ideal client achieve XYZ, the big outcomes, that you deliver by X, Y, Z, the way you're gonna do it. That's really important. So you might be like, um, you know, helping busy professionals lose 10 pounds. It's like, how? You know, is it by online training? Is it by voodoo? Is it hypnotherapy? Is it by shakes or whatever, like that, for example. So how's really important. People are like super cynical by nature. And um, so they want they want all the answers now. There you go, right, so helping who, Achieve what, buy how, and then how much are you going to charge for that, basically. So I haven't got my price in my headline at the moment. It is in, in my profile, but do as I say, not as I do at the moment, because remember, I've been on LinkedIn for a long, long, long time. I've got this kind of like really high profile, 30,000 connections, you know, getting people looking at my profile every day. So it's slightly different from when I started out. But when I started out, my when I first started, like back in the day, it was helping small business owners in Warrington uh, look better online, and sell more using Facebook and Twitter, fence posts, 250 pound a month fence posts. That was it, that was my headline. And how that, the power of that is that when I went to ask to connect with small business owners in Warrington, so I was searching for, using the search, uh, the search engine of LinkedIn, there's like 630 million people now or something, you can search by area and by job title and stuff like that. So I just searched for um, managing director, and then filtered by Warrington, like my little hometown, uh, second degree connections only. So you don't want people who are already connected to you and you don't want people who are like three people away from you. Second degree connections are people who you've got what, at least one person in common with. And that's really important when we talk about accepting everyone who wants to connect with you because the, the more people you have in your network, um, the better your searches are because you have more in the second degree network. For example, if you're connected with me, which unfortunately you can't because I'm maxed out at 30,000 and a stupid LinkedIn won't let me have any more connections. Um, but if you did, then that would open up to my 30,000 connections and there's a good chance the people that you want are probably in there somewhere. So searching for, so I just went to, to LinkedIn, uh, I've done my new headline, I've done my profile, which I'll talk about in a second. And then when you search for people, so managing director, founder, like, you know, business owner in Warrington, like exactly the people I'm actually talking about in my headline, run a search, there's like thousands of them. I was like, oh my God, look at these business owners in Warrington. Um, and I just went through and started adding people. No personalized connection requests, because you don't need to, do you? Because your headline says it all. Going through, adding the people. Um, and all that happened is that I landed in their requests and it said helping small business owners in Warrington. And they're like, wow, I'm a small business owner in Warrington. Who is this woman? Like, I, I want to do those things. Click on my name, you know, come and see. And then take them through the journey, which I'm going to go through in a second. And they were sending me a message going, Helen, this is amazing. I am a small business owner in Warrington. I can't believe I found you. I'm like, oh, that's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and then 
please can I, I you know please can I have one of your spaces as a you know as a client and it it sounds mad but that's kind of how it goes like people see your headline and they're like oh my god this person's exactly for me most people use LinkedIn right most people are naturally selfish and self-absorbed and hostile, like, especially on LinkedIn. So they kind of, everyone has to go through this process of when someone wants to connect with them, they think, why? Who is this person? Are they for me? What do they want? What are they trying to sell me? Like, you know, what's in it for me? And you've answered all those questions up front. So people just love it. And we know that because it's like, they, we see this again and again and again in all of my groups. We've got a free group, um, a free Facebook group for uh, called LinkedIn Marketing Group. It's like nearly 20,000 people in there. And over and over again, people say, someone's just messaged me and said, they love my headline and it's like it spoke direct to them. And it's because it does. That's how we set it up. That's how we set it up. Um, so, Sarah, you've, you've had a really good go at that, but you can't help everyone. Like, you need to choose who are you going to focus on. Because if you don't have the focus then you're not going to get the resonance that I was talking about there. So try and pick a niche of people who you really, really do want to help um, and you know you're going to get on with and know you're going to like and you know can afford you. That's the really important bit as well. Um, but it's really good, really good first attempt. I like it. When we start helping who, she, what. But it's good. And it's good to have your... Um, yeah, you did. So exactly, you cast a net wide, wide. But actually, the more niche you are, the easier it is to find clients. Like, how many clients do you need for this stuff? Like... You know, so the more niche you are, the more, the easier it is to find clients and the more you can charge, so it's good. So when we are asking people to connect, we don't write a headline in the notes because we don't need to. It's there in the, in, the, in the views of people who are asking to connect with them. We don't write anything in that little box. Just ignore what LinkedIn says about you getting more connection requests. There's nothing you can write in that box to a complete stranger just to make you sound weird. You know, either you do a massive research piece and you write a really intricate intimate you know personalized connection request where you've done loads of research which makes you seem weird and desperate or you write a sort of generic friendly thing which makes you seem like you put no effort in so you can't win so just use the generic one which is i'd like you to add, to my, add you to my professional network on linkedin because that's what you do want them to do uh, and you know ask people to connect who fit in your ideal client and who you who you've specified in your headline then do nothing do not message them do not say thanks for connecting. Do not ask them how they're doing. Do not do any of that stuff because it's weird and gross and no one likes it. Okay, so headline, super important. Helping who achieve what, like what. And don't worry too much about getting it right now. It's a definitely a process. Um, and I know for a fact, lots of people go through it. Like in the mastermind, people changing the headlines all the time, tweaking it and, and you know, getting braver with it, getting more niche because they see how it works and stuff like that. So. Don't worry too much and all the resources, all this stuff I'm talking about, oh, most of it is, is available. Things like we've got a free headline guide that you can download and stuff like that. So don't panic. It's like once I've gone, it's not like I've gone forever. Like you can find all this stuff elsewhere. Good. Okay, good. So Simone's having a good go at that, which is good. Good. Nice. Just says effectiveness twice. You don't need team effectiveness twice. You might run out of characters, but that's a brilliant first start as well. Good. Okay. So. Headline, get them Helened up, make them so they're all about your ideal client and not about you. And it'll change your LinkedIn experience massively just by doing that bit. And I know that for a fact. So that bit's really important. And then so knowing your headline, writing your headline like that, but then the, the bit that makes a big difference, turning those strangers into browsers, is your profile. So there we want to go through a process where they are nodding and leaning in. So this is what we're thinking about your ideal client. They've seen, your, seen you somewhere, whether it's something you've posted, you've asked them to connect, or somewhere that you've been engaging publicly with other people. They're interested enough on your headline to click and come and have a look, which is great. They click through and then the first line of your profile should say, are you a X, Y, Z, question mark. So for Smoke, are you a busy HR director, question mark. Yeah. Or, you know, are you, so mine said, are you a small business owner in Warrington? Question mark. Right. So we want people to be going, yes, I am. And then clicking to read more. Micro emotional, uh, my emotional commitments towards you, towards the sale. So are you a, this person, then do you feel, so do you feel is a, what emotions are they going through around the problems they've got basically? So do you feel frustrated that your team isn't performing as well as it should be? 
you know, are you dealing with absenteeism or sickness? And, you know, if one of, one of gets to the problem, bottom of the problem that, that is causing it, you know, would you like these things to happen? So would you like to achieve excellent team effectiveness, which means X, Y, Z, you know, really expand on some of the keywords that they would like to speak their language. If so, I can help. This is, this is why my product or service is a solution to this specific problem. Yeah, so for me, it's like, I've got the LinkedIn mastermind, it's this, it's that, it's that, you know what I mean? So like a practical review of what it is that you're trying to sell them. Um, and then this is why it's me. So why are you the person to deliver this product or service to this exact person? So you're going to put a bit of emotion in there. You want to put a bit of your backstory in there. Like no one wins the X factor um, by being a good singer. Like we want people to connect with us on an emotional level. And the one thing people never are on LinkedIn is open and vulnerable. So the more open and vulnerable you can be, the better. Because people are people um, and everyone else tries to hide behind their branding and their positioning and their expertise and their results and their clients when actually I believe you know it doesn't matter who you're selling to I, I used to sell to HR directors as well I'll cover that in a sec um HR directors is traditionally like massive bitches on LinkedIn because they're so hostile they get hammered all day every day um they're still people though right so you still want people to emotionally collect into you as the business owner and then this is what you need to do next. Give them a really clear, concise call to action, which I recommend is send me a message on LinkedIn. What we don't want to do is to get people going to booking links, websites, like looking at anything else because we could lose them. We just want them to send you a message on LinkedIn. It keeps everything in. It makes you much easier for you to track your leads. Um, and it just makes it frictionless. Like we want this to be as frictionless as possible for your ideal client. So just to run through the profile again, are you this person? Yeah, question mark. Do you feel these things about what's going on in, in your life or your business, or your problem? Um, would you like these things to happen? So talking about the utopian outcomes that you're gonna deliver. If so, I can help. This is why my product and service is the, is the answer to that. The, you know, this is why it's me as a person, why I'm the owner of this business, why I do this out of all the things that I could be doing and, and what's led me to this point. You know, this is, the, this is why you need to make a decision now, and this is what you need to do next. This is how you actually get in touch. That's your profile that converts people from interested browsers into people who are actually on the verge of sending you a message. Now, on your profile as well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can add video into the bottom of your profile, which is unbelievable. Like, if I could have sold this 20 years ago, I mean, and it's free. I know I've just been asked about premium. You do not need LinkedIn premium. You don't need it. I suggest you get it because it makes things easier and greases the wheels, if you like, of this, this strategic approach to using LinkedIn. But you do not need it. I didn't have it for years. Um, if you get it, it's going to make no difference to your LinkedIn lead gen. It's just going to make things easier when you, do, when you are active and you are implementing this strategy because it's going to allow you to see more data. It's going to allow you to connect with more people. That's it. So it's, if things are tight, you don't need it. If you see it as 50 quid a month, cost of business, let's go for it. Then, you know, tax deductible, then absolutely get it. And also, I think, you know, LinkedIn's such an incredible resource. You know, it's an absolute bargain, personally. And you should be making, if you if you if you're implementing my advice, like you, you're going to be making a lot more than 50 quid a month. So it's, you know, it's easily absorbed into that. Um, but don't think if I get LinkedIn premium, suddenly LinkedIn's going to give me leads because you might as well put you 50 quid down the grid, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so you are, you are able to embed what's called media into your profile. So think about if you've got risk averse clients, you know, someone who's not like me buying stuff in the middle of the night off Instagram and, you know, buying a hot tub to, you know, because I thought the people were being mean to him in the comments and, you know, like I'm an impulse buyer, you know, massively. If your ideal client isn't like that and is more risk averse, you have this amazing opportunity to let them do their own research without even leaving your page, without even leaving your profile, which is huge. So you can put video in there of you talking about your business and what you do and how you do it and how great you are, or whatever. You can put video, you can carousel this shit in, honestly. You can put videos of your ideal clients, other ideal clients, like all current clients doing video testimonials and putting stuff in there. You can 
and you know have things like price lists well i don't recommend price lists obviously because confused mind says no but you can have like pdfs embedded in there that you can look at do more research you have testimonials in there like you can have all that stuff in there which is incredible and people don't leave your page to look at it it kind of overlays on and then underneath that you've got the recommendation section so i've got um hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recommendations and um it's it's really easy for me when someone says, well, I don't know if I should join your program. And I'm like, okay, so just go to my profile, go to LinkedIn, go to my profile, have a scroll through, and you can see all the people on there who have given me recommendations. Like you'll see from their headline what they do and who they help. And you know, because most of the people on there are my customers, just click on any of them and message them and ask them about the program. Just click on any of them and ask them about me. Like I don't need to sort of, filter out like oh i'll give you three re references it's kind of like go and look for yourself these are real people you can click on you can ask them anything and um, it's a really powerful thing the linkedin recommendation because they're so hard to fake because if i give someone a testimonial a recommendation on linkedin and someone can see that they can click on it they can come and see me see i've got thirty thousand connections i'm actually on linkedin like it's kind of it's much more powerful than saying you know helen said this nice thing about me and put it on the website so it's unbelievable really that that, that those that functionality is there for free on LinkedIn. So your headline, which should engage people outside of your profile by the stuff that you post, by asking people to connect, by engaging publicly with your audience. And then when people click on it, and only interested people should, because we're going to be really specific about who we want to click on it, then we can talk to those people like they're the only people in the world. It's a love letter to your ideal client. So just to give you a, a quick example, in my example at the beginning, mine was helping small business owners in Warrington sell more um, club out online using Facebook and Twitter, £250 a month. And then it said, are you a small business owner in Warrington? Do you feel frustrated that everyone's doing social media, your competitors are doing it, but you've got no interest in it, but you know you've got to do something about it? Would you like somebody to just manage the whole process for you? You know, just somebody that can just call you once a month to discuss how things are going, who's going to get you you know, it's more sales, going to make more money than you're going to spend with them. Uh, if so, I can help. I'm a social media manager. I've done this for the clients. I've done it for my own businesses. I absolutely love social media. Like, I'm in it all day, every day. I get it. I know how to use it to make money. Like, I'm a single mum. I'm a business owner just like you. I live in Warrington as well. Like, I'm looking for 10 clients um, to take up my £250 package. Um, if that sounds of interest, then send me a message on here. And people just did. They were like, oh, great, cool. And then people say, can you do a 500 pound package? I say, no, <laughs> I only do 250. Uh, can you do a hundred pound? No. So I just, I didn't stop until I got my 10 clients. Um, and I was really focused on that. And it changed my life because all my clients came to me. It was super easy. I didn't have to spend any money. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to go to any like scary meetings or do any presentations or anything like that, which is weird because now I speak on stage all over the world, but anyway. Um, at the time, like it massively saved me. When my business grew and changed, and you know, I, I changed what I was doing. I was working with, um, I wanted to do Facebook ads for recruitment, and that was like my, that's what I evolved into an agency doing that. And then when I wanted to get clients for that, I just totally deleted all my LinkedIn profile, like the words, not the profile. And then the new headline was helping HR directors hire better people faster using Facebook ads, Facebook posts, 3,000 pounds a month. You know, and it's like, are you a HR director? Question mark. Are you frustrated with not recruiting the people that you need? You know, using expensive recruiters or you know, getting a load of rubbish from job boards. Would you like some? Would you like a way to get into your ideal your ideal passive candidates' actual hands while they're scrolling through uh, Facebook of an evening with a glass of wine and the other hand watching the telly? If so, I can help. You know, we've done this for some clients. This is the results that we've got. You know, I've been running an agency for the last couple of years. I really feel like this is the future. I've worked in recruitment when I was younger. This is, I, this is, you know, I see this as the future of recruitment. It's £3,000 a month. This is what you get. You know, I've got space for 10 clients. If it's of interest, send me a message on here. And so it's kind of that, there's two examples of just for me that worked massively. And then HR directors were messaging me saying, oh, it looks really interesting. You tell me more about it. Got all my clients that way. And it was only really when I started talking about this stuff that I realized that not everyone used LinkedIn this way. <laughs> and then I would meet people uh, at events. They'd be like, how have you got this client? So I was working with all these big, like, blue chip clients, like Eddie Stobart, Lakeland Plastics, Cambian Healthcare, 
um, ex logistics, like all these big guns, and, and they'd all come to me. And people say, How did you get that client? I was like, Oh, they came to me on LinkedIn. And they're like, What? And I was like, Yeah, I, I did this lighthouse marketing thing. That's what I might call it. You know, I just know who I am. I know what I'm looking for. I know how much I'm going to charge. I know what my values are. And I, I stand strong in that. And then I put my content out like a light. I'm going to uh, cover content in a sec. And then the people are just drawn to me. And then they, they message me and ask me to, uh, ask me to, ask me how they can buy from me <laughs> and people are like no nah, don't worry like that it's like honestly i call it my back of a napkin because um strategy because i used to draw it on the back of a napkin so it'd always be at events i'm like oh give us a pen i'm like this is your profile this is the important things here now this is the four pillars of content that i advise you put out this is what you need to do in terms of growing your audience and this is that what you need to do in terms of engaging with your audience you know you create an ecosystem around you of your only of your ideal clients pretty much and then you become the go-to person for your thing for them. And then when they're ready, they come to you. It's beautiful. And people are just like, ah, oh, that's how it works, Helen. I was like, no, it does. It's been working for years for me. So, um, and then they'd go away and then come back and be like, oh my God, I did what you told me and it works. Like, I can't believe it. And I'd be like, I know, it works. <laughs> like, that's how it works. It's great, isn't it? So, um, yeah, if you want a really fun and easy way to get these on LinkedIn, this is this is it. Like, there's no stressful thing. Like, there's no sending any direct messages whatsoever. That's the really, really important thing to remember. Like, you do not message people who are in your network um, unsolicited at all. You wait for them to come to you. So it is a longer game. Like, it's not a sexy quick fix as in, you know, I'll send out 100 messages, one person might come back to you and you can start a conversation and then they might buy from you. That isn't a quick fix either. That's the fastest way to destroy your professional reputation. Like 99 people think you're a dick and never want to work with you. And that one person may or may not work with you in the future. It's like a really hard slog way of doing things. Whereas this is, you have to have patience and you have to believe in what you're doing. Um, that's why things like the mastermind work really well because we can keep everyone like on the bus with it. But honestly, like it, it works. Like, and people, people don't really engage with your stuff on LinkedIn massively. That's not the, the point. The point is that people see your stuff and when they're ready, they, they come to you. So let me just have another sip of tea because there's a lot of talking. Um, okay, so this, I'm gonna answer that question at the end, by the way, so I don't think I'm not seeing it. So start asking me loads of questions because I, I, like, I like a bit of Q and A at the end. Okay, so you've got your sexy profile, love letter to your ideal client, you've made all the hard decisions about who you're gonna pick and focus on just for now, not forever. You've stuck some video on there, like you've got some recommendations. How do you get recommendations, guys? You go and give lots of recommendations. So go and give loads of recommendations to people that you've worked with, who you know, could be from years ago, could be from last week. Um, and, and don't ask for them back, but over time you will get them. Um, so it's kind of, it's there and it's ready. Unfortunately, that's not the end. <laughs> that's the beginning. So when you do that, then the, the name of the game then, and not before, because you need to make sure it's right and ready. The name of the game is how do I get people to look at it? How do I get the right people to look at it? How do I get my ideal clients, potential ideal clients, to come and look at it? And it becomes a numbers game then. It becomes a point of like, how can I get as much traction and traffic coming to this as possible until I hit my target of getting my clients? Now, there's three ways of doing that, and they're the three things that I'm going to talk about today. And these are the three things you need to be doing every single day on LinkedIn, including the weekends, especially the weekends. A lot of activity happens on the weekend. And a lot of people think you don't know, bother with LinkedIn on the weekend, which gives you a massive competitive advantage as well. So definitely the weekend. So the first thing you need to do is add 10 people every single day without fail. And, and at least 10. I don't go mad because you can get restricted. Um, in the old days, we used to do 100 a day and we never got restricted. But anyway, things might have changed. And I don't want you going, running off, going wild and then coming back and saying, you know, telling them that I've brought your LinkedIn. So stick to 10. 10 people every day without fail. Do, run your search. Um, find 10 people who are potential ideal clients and ask them to connect with you on LinkedIn. That's it. That's all you do. But you do it every single day. You do it like clockwork. If I was as good at doing sit-ups as I am, as adding people on LinkedIn, or I was until I got to my maximum, like I'd have a six pack, but I was more, I'm more bothered about being rich than I am about being thin. So that's why I'm still the shape I am. However, my bank balance is a lot better. So 10 people every single day, super important because you're getting new people, eyes on the prize, people looking at your profile day in, day out, day in, day out. And it just expands your network massively. Every time you run a search, it's better. You know, every, you know, really important. Like that's a non-negotiable. 10 people a day, every day, without fail. The second thing is to post every day, at least once a day. Now, I know everyone's like, oh, 
content. <laughs> Nobody wants to do content, right? Um, so there's a couple of ways to make this easy. So I focus on the four pillars of content, which I'm going to write in the comments for you guys. Um, so they are stories, video, social proof, and call to action posts. Now, we haven't got time to go into massive detail about that, but I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what I mean by that. So stories are, a story post for me is something that gives your ideal client a little bit more information about who you are and what you do. And that's the simple way of looking at it. So it could be something about, like my most popular content ever was when I wrote, I was like, when I was 18, I dropped out of uni to run away with the boy with the Sierra Cosworth. And then in brackets, like Moonstone Blue original, I always, like, you know, I, I, went, I fell into recruitment because it was the only job I could get um, without any qualifications. I worked with, you know, 10 guys and me, we used to go to lunch. We had, we had a roller deck, you know, we had no phones. We used to go to the pub at lunch and drink hooch and never come back to work on a Friday, you know, and that's why I love, I, you know, and I, I, but I really realized the power of getting the right person in the right job in that, you know, in that era. Um, and that's why I, I'm now doing Facebook ads for recruitment because I'm mixing the power of recruitment with the power of social media. Yeah, so that's like a story which was relevant to what I was doing, but the nostalgia thing, people love that stuff. So stories about who you are, what you do, why you do it, what your values are, what you believe in, what your, your wins and your losses, your hopes and your dreams, what you did last week, what you're doing next week. Those kind of things, class of stories. You don't always have to write war and peace. Sometimes it could just be like, I really enjoyed doing this workshop today, had a great time, screenshot, whatever. Yeah, simple, simple stuff. Um, but sometimes you can go a bit deeper, depending on how you feel. Uh, so that's a story. A video post is a video on LinkedIn. I know I was like, oh, not more video. All I'm going to say on video is the more video you do, the more money you make. It's the number one way to get people to it. So a lot of people talk about no like and trust. I like, I go for like me, love me, want more of me. It's the number one way to get people to fall in love with you. It's video. And it's also the number way to get people to repel you from you. So you never attract knobhead clients that you don't want to work with. Yeah, because they will decide on the video straight away, I don't like this woman, I don't want to work with her. Yeah, and that's how well you want. You want to repel all those people who don't like you, don't like your personality, don't like the way you look, don't like the way you show up. Like, there's loads of people like that. It's the same with it, like anything, isn't it? People make a decision of judgment. doesn't mean they're, they're, not, they're no one's ideal client. They're just not your ideal client. Let them go and let them go and be someone else's ideal client. So we don't need to attract everybody, but video is such a good way of getting people to really understand who you are. Like I'm writing a book at the moment, well, that's a lie, but a ghostwriter writing a book at the moment, and she's transcribed almost some of my stuff, and it sounds awful. It sounds really brutal and horrible, but it's different because when I'm saying it, I'm saying it in context, and I'm, you know, I've got my facial expressions, my body language, and all that kind of stuff, and it's completely different context. So it's super powerful. And it's also one of the things a lot of people won't do. And I always think if you want to get results that people don't have, like do the things that people won't do. So video is the number one way for me to get people to know you. It almost doesn't matter what you're saying. The point is that you show up consistently and people get to know you. Video, huge. Social proof, the number one way to get people to make a decision um, because people are emotional. They're emotional buyers. They buy based on what they desire and what they want and what they think it's going to, how it's going to make them feel afterwards or how it's going to make people view them afterwards. Um, but they, they want to get a, a logist, a logical reason for making that emotional decision and social proof is it. So social proof is a screenshot or a testimonial of someone somewhere else saying you are who you say you are and you can do what you say you can do. It's the normal way to get people off the fence as I would call it. So you need to be posting that regularly. If you're brand new in business, go and do your thing free for three people in return for some social proof and just use that again and again and again and again. Um, and then call to action post is a really short, simple post that says, this is, this is what I do. This is how much it is. It's how you get it. Like, come on, you know, send me a message. Nobody will engage on that and that's okay. We want people to see that and message you um, rather than comment on that. So that's the, the second thing you need to do every day is post at least once on LinkedIn ideally more than once um, but i don't want you to like panic and think get overwhelmed um, but you need to be posting in that kind of rhythm so stories video social proof call to action so you're not always posting like sell, sales posts you know always just telling stories like that rhythm whether you're doing one a day or four a day or whatever you want to do or even one a week it doesn't really matter but stories video social proof call to action the more you show up on linkedin the more you make
because people half the people won't see you the other half won't care so you've got to be present always present so that when people have got the problem that you can solve then they can make it they, they, it's easy for them to message you and easy for them to contact you but you don't people shouldn't ever have to do any work when it comes to buying from you it could be frictionless and easy so by showing up consistently like on linkedin not only do people trust that you're going to show up in the future as well for them and um, they, they know it's easy to find you and they, and they know what they do the most common thing you you will hear in your dms is i've been watching you for ages and now i'm ready to buy from you and you'll have never heard of them they'll have never liked commented or anything and that's okay because it's not what linkedin's about so the third thing you need to do every day is engage with your ideal client posts publicly so when your audience posts i want you to go and be nice to them about whatever it is they're posting not shoehorn your own pitch in because that's a dick move not try and like turn the conversation around to your specialist subject not try and get involved in some kind of controversial stuff honestly i've done all that it's a it's a it's a bad vibe waste of energy um just go and support what they're trying to do on linkedin what they're trying to get out of that post they post people think about how you feel when someone comes along and validates what you're saying online yeah even if it's just a bit of support or they're like you know it's not weird to do it to other people because it doesn't feel weird when people do it for you it feels good and we want people to feel good about us and there's two benefits so when we're engaging with our um, ideal clients publicly they see our name and headline really important over and over again which is great they get to know we start to build those relationships publicly but also so does all of their audience and linkedin's very linear because most people use it as a cv or a recruitment tool they tend to hang around with on there people who are just like them commercially uh, like from a, a career point of view so people have been to uni with people have done cpd with people have worked with you know so for example hr directors when i was engaging with them publicly people were messaging me saying oh I saw you comment on Jane's post, like I used to work with Jane, like are you doing some work with Jane at her company? Because like basically, if so, we want to work with you because you know they're, they're our competitors or they're our, you know, they're you know, we know Jane, we like Jane, we trust her, but we want what she's got, you know, and that works really, really well. So public engagement is the third thing you need to be doing. Set a timer, make yourself do it it's 20 minutes a day, otherwise you just won't do it. <laughs> um, okay, so that is kind of it. Like honestly they're the three things that you need to do every day so to know your ideal client write your headline for your ideal client be really specific post, like every day add 10 people post something at least and engage with your audience publicly that's it like if you do that then what will happen is over time you will create an ecosystem around you where you're the go-to person for your thing in your niche and they'll know how to find you and it'll be super easy for them to contact you so that's kind of that's kind of it guys like that that's the that's the fundamental basics and it doesn't have to get any more complicated than that. Ta -da! I can't hear you on mute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's tech, tech this morning. Oh, that was there amazing. Back in the game. I've got too many dogs and children and needy husbands <laughs> wanting coming up asking me questions. You know when they're like, I'm doing this webinar at 11 till 12 and they yeah. still come. Yeah, it's like all they hear is 11 till 12, come and ask me something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally going, I've got both my kids off school, so I was like, right, here's your food, here's your drink, like the teenagers, here's all the stuff you need, I'm going on a webinar, you know, can still hear them clattering about, and anyway, they managed to come down, but, no, thank yeah. Thank you for that, that was really, really helpful. What, um, one, you know, if someone said about um, commenting on other people's posts, does that help get? like visibility and stuff if you just massively you know, yeah. yeah so you want to be doing that all you know a good 20 minutes a day is going and commenting on other people's posts but like i said not trying to turn the conversation around to your specialist subjects and not trying to shoot on a picture and actually supporting what they're doing your headline does the pitching for you you never have to like slide in to someone's like dms you never have to like you know try and look for conversations that you can add value to just look for your ideal clients to support what they're doing because it builds goodwill and goodwill is the currency of sales really i just want to answer sarah's question about how do you balance the profile of an ideal client with not excluding too many people just have confidence there are enough potential clients out there what i do is general, generally relevant for everyone that can afford it it's quite tricky to narrow down dead common and that's why i said right at the beginning it's going to make you feel really uncomfortable because naturally we want to sort of 
put it out there for everyone so we can help all the people and we can sell to all the people but what happens is you just help no one sell to nobody because nobody knows if it's exactly for them honestly the more niche you are the better it can be like honestly it just i can't say that often enough just pick someone pick, pick a type of person and focus on them get 10 of them as clients and then you can open up massively like i know mine says helping coaches consultants and business owners so that's kind of um i'm kind of like oh uh, it, it, that's not what i teach but I've, I've been i've been able to open it up a little bit because of you know my profile and that kind of stuff on there i just wanted to talk about my profile very quickly as well um all i do now so i don't do the adding every day because i'm up to my limit we, we do post on there all the time and I don't do much engagement now. So when I'm talking about all the stuff you need to be doing now, I don't want you to think it's forever, if that makes sense. Like, oh my God, I've got to be like slogging it out on LinkedIn every single day. But you do have to do it for sort of 12 to 18 months um, to get to the, to get to this sort of position. And I just wanted to talk about my stats because I've not looked for ages. Um, so my stats, bear in mind, we just post, I think we post a couple of times a day now. So I've had 5,308 views on my profile in the last 90 days and I've, I've appeared in two and a half thousand search appearances in the last seven days so you can see how once you almost reach maximum velocity of like you know you've got all your connections you know what you do you're showing up all the time you be consistent like it it almost starts to work itself all, all I need to do is go to my inbox and, and there are you know how high hell in a senior stuff you know when's your next course when's this when's that you know so it's not like I want you to go and graft it out for the rest of your life on LinkedIn. It's like to really get it going and working though, it's you've got to show up and, and be on LinkedIn, rather, uh, be in LinkedIn rather than just on it. Yeah. <laughs> Louise is completely overexcited about doing this. Good. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited um, too. I never thought I'd say that about LinkedIn, Helen. I know, so thank right? you. I have a mission to get people to find LinkedIn interesting. <laughs> I'm just looking in the Q&A. Can you see the Q&A? Oh yeah, no, I didn't look in there. I was looking yeah, in you've, got one, you've got a question in there. Oh yeah, should one or two uh, free coaching sessions be offered to allow for a connection to be established, which seems important to me in the following setting. I am helping women reduce their feelings of stress to prevent themselves from burning out. I want to offer a course of six weeks, which is going to be 6,000 something, CHF. Uh, and I don't think putting on a page openly is a good idea. Okay, so my answer would be absolutely do not do free coaching sessions for anyone ever because it completely devalues not only what you do, but also how people um, approach it. Um, putting out loads of great content about how you help people with this stuff, you will get no one engaging with it, but people will message you privately. So people will want to publicly say, I've got this problem with burnout. But when you're putting content out about all the, the triggers of burnout and like, how stress leads to burnout and you know all about your expertise, people will definitely message you now in terms of what would i offer for free i would only ever and i, I don't do this now but when i was starting out i would do a 99 pound session so for an hour an hour's sort of strategy session it's uh, you know or account whatever sort of session you know for you to show off your expertise i charged 99 pounds as i did then and i did hundreds and hundreds of those a really good way of getting people to try before they buy a higher uh, ticket thing definitely um, and in terms of free I only have it off a 15 minute phone call for free and just having your boundaries around that is really, really important. But, uh, you don't think it's a good idea putting the price on openly. I'm, I'm not sure why you don't think it's a good idea, but I'm going to guess it's because it makes you feel uncomfortable um, and that's okay. It's okay. It makes you feel uncomfortable, but what's a really bad idea is not putting your prices out there, giving people free sessions. And then at the end of the sessions, they work out there's no way they could ever afford you. And you have that really awkward moment where they can't afford you. You've given them an hour of your time. They feel like guilty and weird about it. And, and you feel frustrated and annoyed about it. So I just think that from a strategic point of view, I know I, I get how it seems to make sense. And I, I know I've you know, coached tons of, tons of people who do this stuff. Um, but when, when I get them out of that mindset and into the, the new one of, you know, we don't do anything for free. You know, you can have a 50 minute chat to see if there's a fit. You know, you you know, we charge a nominal amount for doing a session. You know, suddenly they're making more money and they're getting better clients. And when they put the prices out there, they, they never have that that moment where, um, you know, they, everything gets awkward. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it makes it more awkward to wait with saying the price. Yeah, and I don't want you, so I don't care about your client, I care about you, right? So I don't want you to be spending time with people who can't afford you. You know, it just, it doesn't make sense. And by putting out loads of free content, you can help people for free, you know, and once you've got your 
foundations in place, you've got your 10 clients or your 100 clients, whatever you're looking for, or your two clients, whatever your number was at the beginning, then you can start to say, right, I can relax now, I can breathe, I've got my own, you know, oxygen mask on, now I can start to do things like free Facebook groups or, you know, I do free challenges. So when I do a free challenge, we get 2,000 people in, you know, 5% of people will buy, 95% of people will never buy from me. So I know, I sleep well at night knowing that I'm helping all these people for free who can get enough from me to go and actually go make some money. And then if they come back and buy, great. If they don't, you know, I've still converted my 5%. So I'm still making great money. So it's kind of like you can create those win-wins in your business after you've got your foundation in place and you've got, you know, a predictable, profitable business and you're making good money and, you know, you're really confident and, and, and know where your next clients are coming from, which is where LinkedIn really does step in for its, for its, uh, its own. Oh, it's French. It's Swiss francs. See, that's how non-international I am. I didn't even know what that was. Um, Simone, views on article function. Right, so articles are good in a way because when you do a post, when you post, you can only write so many letters, so, so many characters, which is annoying if you like typing. Um, so you can write something and you can make it a bit more interactive. So you can have things like links and images, you can embed videos, all that kind of stuff. So you can do some really good, strong article writing things. However, no one ever looks at them <laughs> because you post them and then no one looks at them and to get people to look at them, you have to share them as an article as a post anyway, if that makes sense. So you have to do this consistently, but it is good. To, and they, what's good about them is they stay on your profile as well. So I've got a few key ones that I've written. And if I was a bit better and more organized and more strategic, then I would have some really killer articles on LinkedIn, like, you know, setting up your profile or, you know, how to use it, you know, why I think the ends are like rubbish, whatever. And then I could refer people back to them. But actually, like, you know, it just doesn't seem like the best use of anyone's time. I don't want people spending hours writing articles no one look at, basically. But yeah, they, they, they're good in a way, but they're nice to have rather than an essential post. Daily posts are the essential thing. Do that first. Oh, so Sarah says, um, those who feel uncomfortable, maybe imagine someone has recommended your price point to you instead of setting it yourself. Helps me knowing it's set externally, as I think women often we often feel awkward about asking for too much yes we could do a whole webinar and i'd love to do one a whole webinar on pricing and worth and women and like yeah it's a huge huge issue i'd say 80 percent of my audience are women and it's a it's a huge thing about putting your prices out there and how it makes you feel and you know putting yourself out there to be vulnerable and judged and for failure and all those kind of things and it's it's a drum that i bang massively in my business and people they love it because, you know, they're terrified and then when they do it, they feel super empowered and it can change the game for people. Yeah, definitely. Or just imagine you're a man. <laughs> yeah. huh? men, men don't care about saying the prices out loud, trust me. Oh no, they don't. They, and and they, over, they over big it up, don't they? Yeah. They go, exactly. oh, we think we can get 60 quid, but we're going to, we'll put it up at 150. Fuck it. Yeah, they do. They <laughs> see, do. What, see what mugs buy it and where we do the opposite. Yeah, um, yeah. And actually, you've got to take the personal out, haven't you? You've got to take the emotional out and the personal out and you. go, yeah. what, would, what would I be prepared to pay for this service? Exactly. Um, and it's kind of like other people's finances are none of your business. Like, it's not, you know, and I, I never overcome a price objection. If someone says to me, I can't afford you, I'm like, oh, cool. Like, here's all my free stuff. Like, I never, I never, and I've got, again, it's a real soapbox that I'm on around, you know, people get people into free calls, discovery calls. And then at the end, because they feel guilty, they start saying things like, well, why don't you go and get a credit card? Or why don't you borrow some money? And, you know what I mean? If you really valued yourself and all that kind of stuff, it's disgusting. You know, it's, I, I, it needs to be taken out of the industry. Definitely, but a lot of people come to me after that. They're like, "Oh, I spent all this money on something that I didn't, I didn't want to." So there's two sides to it, and I think open and honest transparency, even though it makes you feel weird and uncomfortable, is is always the way forward. Yeah. Someone says, "Have you ever used Crystal Nose?" Simone no. says, "Personality profiles of your LinkedIn connections." No, sounds like a porn star, don't she? Crystal Nose. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the secret one. I've never, I've never, no, I've never heard of it. No. See, this is what I mean. I'm like. I'm a bit, I don't really know what's going on the ins and outs on LinkedIn because I just do my stuff and, and get my leads out of it. And the kind of, I leave all the, the little tips and tricks and hacks and all that kind of thing. I leave that to the people who aren't confident in teaching the basics because they feel like they need to make it really com complicated so they can charge more for it. Whereas I make it really simple and charge more for it. But yeah, it sounds interesting. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Someone else said it's an interesting tool. Mm. I don't know what it is. Check it out. Crystal knows. Um, does anyone have 
any more questions as i said we this we will put this up so you can really go back and watch it again and the tip sheet um and if you suddenly think of anything that you wish you'd ask now then just um fire it over we know where Helen is. We can hunt. Her yeah, I can't, I can't get, I can't escape. I can't leave the country. No. So. I've um, got a quick one, Helen. Yeah, go for it. With like post scheduling, is that, is that worth doing or are there tools that you know about where you can line them all up and fire them out or is that just not very authentic? And Well, I always say, again, we get asked this all the time, like I always say scheduled is better than nothing. Mm. But I want people to be in LinkedIn. So uh, the, the magic happens when you're in there every day, adding your people, doing your posts, you know, looking at the reactions, so engaging with your audience on your content, engaging with other people's audience. Like you've got to be in it like, to yeah. win it, I think. Um, I think down the line, but, you know, I don't even, I, I'm barely in LinkedIn now because I've got a team who do it all for me. So I can't exactly sit here and go, oh, you must do all your own content because, you know, I don't. But I did in the beginning and I think it's important, certainly in the beginning, just to be in there because it's those little fleeting conversations. It's a busy place, you know, those little fleeting conversations and things that you see and alliances that you can build up that, that can really make things happen for you in there. Like, especially when they're all your ideal clients, it's, it, it becomes very addictive because it's kind of, you're like, I can't waste any time in here. Do you know what I mean? Like Facebook, you could just lose a lot, you know, you lose your life in there sometimes. And I love Facebook as well. Don't get me wrong. I make a lot of money out of Facebook as well. But LinkedIn, it's always like, and it, it's never a moment waste in there because you, you ride your clients and the more active you are, the more people are going to see your headlines. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it, it honestly, you make, it is what you make it. And I mean, there, it is full of dickheads as well though. There are loads of people in there who think that they, or like the LinkedIn police that they decide what people can and can't post, that they've got an opinion and everything. And honestly, and, and you will get spammed and you might get dick pics if you're lucky. Like these things do happen on LinkedIn and I can't stop them. So you have to accept them as part of the cost of doing business on there and just focus on the good stuff. Like you just ignore everyone who spams you in your inbox. Just ignore them. Like they don't care about you. They don't care about whether you're annoyed or you want to buy. Like they, don't, they just do not care. So it's just part of it. You just got to accept it don't get upset about it like the biggest stuff i see is women going oh this is a professional so i don't want to get hit on and i'm like i never get hit on them so it's very disappointing you know so kind of like just accept that and you know i get lo i used to get loads of grief on there i don't i'm not i don't post anything particularly controversial now i used to get loads of grief because i have all these arguments with people all the time so i was I was just, I was a bit of an arsehole and I was just that confident in my work. So I was kind of marauding around having all these online debates, you know, and it's it great for business in a, long, a lot of ways. But most people are arguing, 99% of them were men and 99% of them were men in jobs who were just sat in offices bored. Remember that most of the people on LinkedIn are bored. They've got sad lives, you know, they're not getting laid like, and they're looking for an argument. So you have to accept that that happens. Try not to take it personally. Remember, it's your profile. You can delete comments if you, if you don't like them. You can block people. Like, you don't have to get into these arguments with, with idiots. Like, you know, so uh, it might not happen, but I'm just saying, just be aware that it might happen and don't let it put you off LinkedIn as a platform because it's still real. Cool. Well, I think we'll, we will end it there unless anyone's got any last minute um, questions. Um, and we'll send it all out. And... Thank you so much, Helen. That was awesome.